Hello everyone, I'm Selu and today I'm going to share with you my process for drawing custom emotes for Twitch, YouTube and Discord. Let's get into it. The only thing you really need for this video is a basic understanding of your drawing program of choice, specifically the familiarity with your brushes, layers and groups. Everyone's process is different and every artist does things in their own way, but I hope this video helps you with some of the fundamentals. The first step is deciding on a pose and getting some references for it. I'm going to be drawing a waving or greeting emote for this video because every channel needs one and I just rebranded so mine needs one too. Many people think that you shouldn't use references and that you should draw completely from memory, but this is simply not true. All artists use references because otherwise you wouldn't know what to improve upon in your future artworks. Google is your best friend when it comes to references, but remember that you're here to study what works and what doesn't, so try not to get distracted. Notice that most emotes are chibis, since it's easy to see their expressions even at small sizes, due to their big heads and expressive eyes. Most emotes have a dark outline, and some of them have very overpronounced poses. These are the kinds of things to look out for when you're gathering your references. The second step is the sketch phase. I normally use a 512 by 512 pixel at 300 dpi canvas for my emotes. It's big enough for me to work comfortably, but not so big that I end up making the, the emote far more detailed than intended. After all, they're only really ever going to be seen at 28 pixels big. I'll share the link for the pencil tool that I use for sketches in the description box. I always start drawing chibis by making a simple circle roughly in the middle of the canvas. It's a great guideline since chibi heads are so round. Next, I add some guidelines so that I can keep track of where the middle of the face is both vertically and horizontally. The horizontal guideline shows me where the eyes are meant to go. I then add the eyes. It's easier for me to draw the iris first because it's easier to move and manipulate than the lashes, and it's also the focal point. The mouth shape is entirely personal preference depending on the character. For example, a small closed mouth smile makes the character look more modest, or the cat-like mouth makes it look extra cute, but normally to convey a lot of happiness I like to draw a big open smiling mouth. The sketching step is the perfect place to make some mistakes, even if you have to redo the sketch completely a few times. Experiment as much as you like, and just have some fun. You'll notice that I start off almost every part of the post by making very oversimplified shapes and then refining them later on. This is a handy way of ensuring that everything is in proportion before spending too much time on details. To draw chibi hands, I like to think that I'm only drawing the first joint of each finger so that they just look like little stubs, as I'm showing here. I repeat these steps for every other part of the sketch. To draw hair more easily, I make another layer underneath the sketch layer and use big shapes to make the different layers of hair, which I then trace. During the sketching phase, it's all about simplifying shapes to make them stand out more at smaller sizes, so do whatever works for you. Finally, I use the liquify tool to manipulate the shapes a little bit, such as making the top of the head bigger or moving some strands of hair. The third step of the process is the line art, which is my favourite. It's very soothing for me. You can remove some of your earlier layers if you prefer, but I like to hide them instead in case I need them later. Working non-destructively has saved my butt more times than I can count. To keep a clean file structure, I also like to group layers together so that I can find them more easily in the future if I need to. One last thing is to keep the navigator window handy so that I can preview my emotes at smaller sizes as I'm drawing them. To find your navigator window, just click on Window, then Navigator, and it will appear for you to place as you see fit. Staying true to our findings from before, I'm going to start with a thick black outline. I'm doing so by using the Continuous Curve tool at 12 pixels big. Afterwards, I will add thinner black lines using a 12 pixel big G pen, and finally, I'll use the mapping pen for the details. 
As I'm working, I'll show my settings on the screen, so just pause the video if you'd like to inspect them more closely. All of the tools I'm using come standard with Clip Studio Paint. Step 4 for me is the colouring and shading of the emote. This step is very personal so I won't show it in detail for the purpose of this video, but I use the lasso fill tool for the base colouring, which can be found under the sub tools for this figure drawing tool. For shading, you need to decide a light source, and unconsciously I've always seemed to make the light source in the top right so my shadows will always fall to the bottom left of all the shapes in the artwork. If you visualize each piece as a separate shape, it makes it a little bit easier to visualize where the shadows will fall, but it's sadly also just something that you'll have to reference and practice. Since my light source is in the top right, that's also where all the light will fall. I like to add a little highlight just inside the line work to make it stand out more, and just because I like very shiny shading, I also add little specks of light in some places. One note for shading, and take note of my color wheel selector for this one, is to use slightly more blue shade of color for the shadows and a slightly more yellow color for the highlights. Don't go overboard with this though, it's a very small change in hue. I followed a small eye tutorial for the colouring for this particular emote, which I will link in the description box below. It was done by one of my favourite emote artists. It just shows that it's never too late to learn, or to try new things. Step 5 is where you start adding details. This is where we can colour the innermost detail line work from before by using a slightly darker colour than the darkest piece of shading. You can also add a few sparkles if you like, or maybe some texture and other details just for your own benefit. Just make sure they don't overpower the emote completely. It still needs to be perfectly visible at very small sizes. When you're done, just hide your background and save the image as a PNG. The last step is exporting. If you're not familiar with Figma, then you can skip to the timestamp I'm showing on screen where I show a different way of resizing and previewing, but if you are familiar with Figma, then it's a powerful tool to use here. Just make three different canvases, 112 by 112, 56 by 56, and 28 by 28 respectively. Inside it, you'll place your image and batch export them. You can also make use of the auto layout function to create some emote previews for yourself so that you can see what they look like at small sizes, as well as how they display on both light and dark mode. I do realize that this looks a bit intimidating if you're not familiar with Figma though, but stay tuned for a different way of doing this. You can use this app, which I'll link in the description box, to resize all of your remotes in one go, simply by dragging and dropping your saved PNG into the box, and then clicking Save All. At the top there is also an emote preview, so you can view your remote in light and dark mode. You may have noticed though that the 28 pixel emote has lost some of its detail due to compression, so let's fix that. Open the emote back up in your drawing program and just add those details back in with your brush. Most importantly, the outlines and the eyes. 
To make the colors pop, you can also duplicate the layer and set it to overlay, then flatten the image and re-export it. And we're done! If you'd like me to explain anything further, please feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to help wherever I can. I'll also add some more links in the description box with some further things you can learn to make the journey a little bit easier, but just keep practicing and you'll be pro in no time.